Good day to all of you. As the Anand College All Boys Association, we are planning to release the next edition of Anand Day magazine by end of March 2023. And in line with, the, with that, according to the established precedence, we are about to uh, conduct a very personal interview with yet another distinguished old Anandian. But this time, the editorial committee has made it a point to offer this opportunity for an illustrious Anandian connected to defense aspects after, after long lapse maybe. So, with that note, you all might be able to guess who is it going to be and let me have the privilege and honor to uh, get the interview with General Kamal Gunaratna, Secretary Defense. I am sure uh, <laughs> with General Gunaratna, we, we will be having scores of things and uh, anecdotes and memories to be discussed, but uh, let us uh, start with a very formal and a, uh, the very, a very standard kind of a question where anybody would ask. General, how do you recall your childhood memories, particularly your parents and your sisters and brothers from that age? Actually, uh, my childhood memories are, I should say, those are sweet memories. Because uh, it is not like nowadays. Uh, when we were children, that means during our childhood, there were no mobile phones. There were no electronic games. There were no other uh, 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 high-class activities with regard to, you know, uh, technology and all. It was purely a village boy's life. So, I hail from uh, Kotta or Pannipitiya, where uh, it was some, somewhat like a rural area. And uh, big gardens, uh, lengthy paddy fields, right, and very free environment to move around. No, not many uh, barbed wire fences and walls, so it was an open area. And we could enjoy our childhood to the maximum. So it was a, uh, it was full of sweet memories. And if I talk a little bit about my uh, family background, my father was a school principal, mother was a teacher, so uh, I, I am inherited with lot of uh, human values and family values that are coming from my parents and uh, I had uh, five siblings, one sister and uh, four brothers, so altogether we were six members in the family and I was the sixth. And uh, I am the only one who attended Ananda College. During my childhood, I, uh, I was entered into Dharmapala Vidyale, Pandipitiya, and uh, I got through the grade 5 scholarship examination. As a result of that, I entered Ananda College. So, I go as an Anandian. And uh, when I look back at my school career, you know, uh, I was privileged to have the education from that uh, Mammoth Education Institution, Ananda College. And also, I was very much privileged and lucky enough to have, uh, have the finest set of teachers who taught us in Ananda College. So, whatever the position I am holding today, or whatever the social status I have today, it is thanks to my parents and also my alma mater, Ananda College, and the teachers who taught us. So, I have a very great deal of respect for my school, that is my alma mater, and also for the teachers who taught us, including my time principal, Colonel uh, G.W. Rajapaksha. Okay, fine. So, I think we all have this, uh, we all cherish this idea of being Ananda and by being Ananda grow up our personalities, grow up our social status and grow up our what that is precisely uh, one of the key factors I have come out got, got out of your this uh, first answer. But having said that, now you entered Ananda College after your grade 5 scholarships and from 5 onwards you have been just staying your 
time through the end of your uh, the preliminary basic education career at Anand. So, how, how do you recall your uh, uh, the, uh, the remembrance at early days at Ananda College? When you entered Ananda College at grade 5, then who the principal was probably pro, uh, the Colonel G. W. Rajapaksa. And uh, just give us some uh, some uh, remembrance of, of your the teachers. You said great teachers, but if you can name a few and then in respect of them as well. Actually, uh, uh, when I was enlisted into the college, right, you know, we were privileged to have a word with the principal, Colonel G. W. Rajapaksha. And I still remember when I went and worshipped him for the first time in my life. And, uh, you know, uh, the way he spoke, very soft spoken, but I observed the power of command and authority in his voice. And even though I was a grade 6 student, I realized the power of expression power of command and the power of authority Colonel G. W. Rajapaksha had. So, he was my role model during my school days. He was a colonel and principal, right? And by that time, I had the idea of joining the forces because uh, I got it from my very early days in school. And I had the idea, so since the principal was a colonel, right, it inspired me a lot. And the way he spoke, the way he uh, uh, solved the problems, the way he tackled situation, including some tense situations, right, some crisis situations, you know, he became my role model. And uh, when it comes to the teachers, uh, I still remember our Buddhagama teacher, Mrs. Vijayaratna, uh, Miss Vijayaratna, who passed away a couple of years ago. And uh, uh, all other teachers who taught us, they taught us the subjects, the academic side, as well as how to live in this society. So that was the main, most important thing. And I, I told you I am inherited with the human values and social values from my family background since my father was a principal and the mother was a teacher. But in addition to that, whatever I inherited from my family background was cut and polished by the set of teachers who were there to teach, not only be, teach all of us. Oh, I think uh, that, uh, uh, one, more, one more clarification. So, Colonel G. W. Rajapaksa was uh, the principal throughout your career at Anand. Okay, fine. So, because in certain cases, okay, there were there were occasions there are people were exposed to the, 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 the other principals who came out after Rajapaksa's regime, who were in a very uh, comparative position to tell us the illustrious life they have had uh, the G. W. Rajapaksa time vis-a-vis -vis the, uh, the, the, the latter part of time. But having said that, now you probably would have uh, be, you know intermingled with your fellow uh, you know classmates uh, during your time from 5 to 12. So, you have any remembrance about your sweet memories with your classmates or the, the yeah. facts that you have? Actually, done? before coming into that, I should uh, mention uh, few things about Colonel G. W. Rajapaksha. You know, I am a uh, career military officer, even though I am a retired military officer now and who has become a government official, I am a retired military officer. So, there is a saying, once a soldier is always a soldier. So, my soldiering will be there in my system from head to toe till I go to my grave, right? So, military system is nothing but leadership, right? We have leaders in every level. We have generals, brigadiers, colonels, majors, captains, lieutenants, uh, warrant officers, sergeants, corporals. Everything is a leadership player, right? So, when it comes to the service in military, Right, leadership has to play a very big role. I still remember the way Colonel G. W. Rajapaksha molded all of us into this leadership business. Right, I give you a very solid example. All of a sudden, I think uh, when I was a uh, schoolboy in grade uh, eight or nine, our head prefect was Harit Vikrama. Right, we we call him still we call him Harit Vikrama Iya. Another role model of a student or student leader. So, he was the head prefect. All of a sudden, 
our, you know, we were about to have the annual sports meet. All of a sudden, uh, principal said, okay, children, now this time, there is not going to be any chief guest from outside for our sports meet. Your chief guest will be Harit Vikrama, your head prefect. Right? And no teacher, no master in charge is going to put their fingers into the organizing of this mega event. Right? You don't know, sports meet in the school, during our days, it was the mega event. The then we were wondering as to how this is going to happen. You know, that is how he wanted us to develop the leadership skills. He brought Harit Vikrama as the chief guest. Before that, it was either a politician or a, a high-level government official. But it was Harit Vikramaya. And, uh, you know, Harit Vikramaya came to the ground, right, with the college tie and white, uh, the, the, then the college blazer on. And the uh, cadet band welcomed him and the band took him to the uh, place where he was supposed to be seated. And from then onwards, until the end, till, till the end, Hariti Kramaya was the chief guest. And he commanded the respect from every athlete. Mm -hmm. And after that, during the prize giving also, he was distributing prizes, being the chief guest. And all the other prefects and uh, the leaders of uh, sports, you know, they were having a fair share of responsibility. When I say fair share of responsibility, right, not only Harit Vikrama, every leader at every level was given with the task and the responsibility. Mm -hmm. So that is how, the, I am just giving you only one example. That is how Colonel G.W. Rajapaksa started molding the students into the leadership. And if we look back at the 30 years long war against the terrorism, most of the generals who led the war against terrorism are Arandians, right? That's a fact. Yes. So, uh, that is about Colonel G.W. Rajapaksha. I don't think uh, I have to describe it again. The way he dressed, the way he, way he talked, the way he walked, the way he looked at us, right? He never hit children. He never punished children. He just gave us looks. Those looks gave the message. One look is enough for us to change the whole attitude. So that is how he handled us. Then uh, when it comes to the uh, leadership in other fields. Now, I should tell you, uh, Mr. Gotabe Rajapaksha became the president. Then he appointed the cabinet of ministers and also the secretaries to the cabinet ministries. So, I am very proud to say that few Anandians who happened to be my classmates, we were together in the pool of secretaries. I was the defense secretary, Kamal Gunradna. Ravinath Arya Singh was the foreign secretary. Uh, Sajit Artikala was the finance secretary. Then Anil Jasinga was the environmental secretary. Likewise, uh, those are all leadership positions in some level in the government machinery. So, that is how uh, he molded not, uh, the, the children, not only for the military, but also for the government service. Right. So, I think uh, having said all that, I think it is uh, the, it's very curious for us to know, how was your, how was your involvement with uh, the, the extracurricular activities, sports, societies? be debating, literature, whatever. Because having got the, the leadership, uh, what do you call anecdote from uh, Colonel G.W. Rajapaksa, I think you would not have escaped joining and doing all these things also, for sure. Actually, Mali, uh, uh, I joined scouting and I ended up as a president scout. And uh, during my period, Anand the college produced the highest number of uh, president scouts and I won uh, the college colors. Then I became a soccer player. I played for the uh, first 11 uh, soccer team in Ananda College. 
then I became a junior prefect, then subsequently senior prefect, then finally I became a, a senior prefect supervisor. And uh, uh, I took part in various uh, extracurricular activities. In science society in the school, we had a separate debating team, equally powerful as the college debating team. So I was a member of that team also. And uh, I was a very active member in many other uh, societies. As an example, uh, aeronautical society, even though I never had any intention of joining the Air Force or Sri Lankan Airlines, I was the president of the aeronautical society. Likewise, we took part in various uh, college extracurricular activities. And, uh, you know, my father, being a principal, he wanted to, he wanted me to study hard and uh, he was always telling me to concentrate on studies but my aim was different he wanted me to become a doctor but my i wanted to become a military officer so my aim was different and i always focused myself of, of achieving more and more qualifications for me to become a military officer because it was a very uh, tough fight to be enlisted as a military officer those days uh, so, I worked towards that, but my father wanted me to work towards the other side. So, even though I wanted to uh, take part in many more extracurricular activities, uh, you know, my father prevented it, saying, if you try to get involved in all these things, then you will not have time to study. Therefore, scouting is enough, football is enough, that is all. So, that is... It's quite... Uh, it's quite... Uh, how do I say the very contemporary that uh, being a being a father as a uh, fa principal as a father and uh, a teacher a mother with that family background I am sure that uh, you would have had a lot of hardships to steer clear of your hidden path over the parental intended path. Yes. So, but having but having completed an industrious life at school engaging in many sports and extracurricular activities and so on and so forth. So, you joined Sri Lanka army. Right, so Sri Lanka Army. So, I think uh, there we have lot more to say, but just can you elaborate a little bit about your journey with reference to any significant events or occasions in that ladder, how you became from, from the starting point to the where you ended up as a, as a, as a officially enlisted soldier? Actually, I joined the Sri Lanka Army as, a, as an officer cadet. So, I still remember the day uh, I took off. When was this? Uh, uh, 31st August 1981. Okay. So, when I was about to leave my home to join the clan, you know, I went and worshipped my mother. She gave me a very loving hug and you know, she was very emotional. Uh, then I went to my father, who was a tough guy. I worshipped him. Of course, he took me to our headquarters, but before that I worshipped him. I still remember what he told me at the time of my departure. I wrote it in my book also, wrote to Nandikada. This is, these are the words of my father. He told me, son, army is a very honorable place. You should stand on your own feet with the spine to serve in that honorable place. You should not become somebody's blue-eyed boy or you should not keep godfathers and imams. You stand on your own foot and the day you feel that your legs are not cooperating for you to stand on your own without disgracing that place, you should leave that place. I still remember that. So, you can imagine the capacity and the character of my father who was the principal. So, uh, then he brought me to army headquarters, handed over me to the army authorities. After that, I went to military academy with my fellow batchmates. It was a very hard and tough training. It was not, it was not a walk on a uh, road uh, with, you know, roses. Uh, it was a tough journey. Bumpy ride, uh, but uh, when I look back, it is very 
happy journey even with difficulties and where i am today is thanks to that journey okay so any any uh, special uh, achievements or something that you can recall uh, in your career okay the basic uh, the promotion and the basic uh, trading on the path is all, all okay but other than that uh, there are any specific uh, uh, recollection actually i i put it I, on the card for us I, to i opted for a fighting regiment okay. because i thought okay if you are from the army that means a fighting regiment so i uh, opted for a fighting regiment you know in the army there are uh, fighting regiments supporting regiments and service regiments mm -hmm. so i joined the fighting regiment infantry regiment i joined uh, the rajarat rifles and after one and a half years it was disbanded and gajaba regiment was formed uh, so i was serving in the gajaba regiment there also the father of the regiment was a uh, general late general vijay vimal ratna so he is a very tough infantry commander he was a very tough infantry commander and he molded us as a uh, good young a set of good young officers and even the officers who led the final onslaught against the ltt most of us are from the gajabar regiment so uh, it was a tough journey very challenging very demanding but still ended up with a very uh, successful uh, road and uh, the biggest success i ever achieved was commanding the army's elite division 53 division or 53rd division the reserve strike force uh, because you know commanding 53 division itself is a privilege because uh, the moment you are put into 53 division to command yeah. everybody know that okay he is considered as one of the best so i had that privilege not that i am wagging my own tail then i led that division till the end of the war and final onslaught was from 53 division and the most memorable moment in my life was killing prabhakaran by the people of my division the man who destroyed my country for more than 30 years the man who killed tens of thousands of innocent people of my country the man who destroyed the image of my country the man who made the lives miserable for the people of my country irrespective of their genders their ethnicities and their social status killed my by my people and lying near my feet like a dead dog right it was the most memorable moment in my whole life and i still remember i still i recall that moment and it keeps me going that uh, tremendous uh, the, the moment that uh, you have played and also the role that you have played at the last minutes of uh, you know trudging trudging the the the, the ltt uh, leader down with your battalion and uh, so now now uh, uh, can you just tell us uh, of course you would have had uh, like you rightly said a lot of anandians probably would have joined uh, at in your uh, as contemporaries in your battalion so you can just tell us some some references of those uh, names so that we can you know give some respect for them as well actually uh, i will give you a very solid example i retired in year 2016 and uh, the day of my retirement i launched my first publication my flagship book road to nandikadal so after couple of months you know when i launched the book it has a very high i mean big demand from the general public and general public uh, accepted this book in very high esteem uh, after couple of months uh, i was attending this uh, thunsia had a program in derana tv and uh, uh, the man who conducted the program he was discussing about uh, road to nandikadal book he has gone through the book and he has uh, marked the salient points that were given in the book and he was asking me various questions and it was a very 
uh, educative and uh, very fruitful uh, interview. At the end, he asked me, okay, General, now you have written a lot about your school, Ananda College, right? Everywhere, right? You find Ananda College, Ananda College and Ananda College. So, why only Ananda College? Other schools are not schools. Why, why didn't you write about other schools as well? It's only Ananda College. Why? Is it the only school? Then I don't know from where the answer came into my mind. I told him, look here. The man who gave a leadership at the, at the, in the capacity of Defense Secretary, Gotabe Rajapaksha is an Anandian. The man who led the army as the army commander, General Sarat Fonseca, is an Anandian. The man who led the uh, Sri Lanka Navy as the commander of the Navy, Vasanta Karanavad, is an Anandian. The man who led the Civil Defense Force, right, uh, Admiral Sarat Virasekar, is an Anandian. And the man who led the 53rd, that otherwise 53 Division, Kamal Gunaratna, is an Anandian. The man who led the 55 Division, Prasanna Silva, is an Anandian. The man who led the 57 Division, Jagat Dias, is an Anandian. The man who led the 59 Division, Chagi Galage, is an Anandian. So, why can't I talk about Ananda? So, that is the solid example that I can give you. The contribution from old Anandians to eradicate terrorism from our motherland. You know, no match. I know that. So, I think it's, it's nothing but a fact that uh, one time you have been a professional soldier with decoration. And then you pursued on, pursued on to a kind of a diplomatic career, maybe uh, by virtue of your credentials in the forces perhaps. And also during that time, you perhaps picked up a very hidden talent of yours, where you embarked in uh, writing books. I mean, irrespective of the, the, the contents of the book, writing a book and getting into the writing a book, it itself is an art and that is a, that's a special character. So, uh, what, what made you to uh, go into that, uh, uh, that aspect? Actually, Malli, I was very good in writing essays during my small days, right? I re still remember uh, when I joined Ananda College in grade 6, our class teacher was Mrs. Katri Arachi. And, uh, you know, she was very fond of uh, uh, getting the children to write essays. So, I started writing essays and I developed that and I became a good writer. But I never thought of writing books and becoming an author. But you know, latter stages of my uh, career, when I was fighting with my uh, soldiers, when I was giving the leadership for my soldiers, you know, I saw how, the, how, how much of sacrifice soldiers had to make, right? the commitment, dedication and hard work of the soldiers who came from rural villages. Most of the soldiers came from rural villages, right? They were born to very poor parents. But those parents told them, okay, instead of going for any other civilian job, my son, you go as a warrior son to the battlefield. You join the Sri Lanka army and save the motherland from the clutches of terrorism. So that is how they came to the Sri Lanka army. And uh, uh, then they came, they were trained, they were given weapons and they were fighting alongside us. And I saw the sacrifice, the dedication, commitment and hard work of these soldiers. So soldiers, you know, there were a lot of casualties wounded in action as well as killed in action. So, whenever I see, uh, whenever I saw a battle casualty or a dead body of a soldier who is killed in action, I thought, okay, when the news goes to this boy's parents, the amount of sorrow, the sadness, right, would be unimaginable. Therefore, I thought, okay, now, the soldiers are dying, 
Soldiers are getting maimed and wounded, but every soldier I commanded had owners. Every soldier I commanded was somebody's son, somebody's husband or somebody's father. So, I could not use them as expendable items in the battlefield. Right? That is why before employing them into the battlefield, I had to think not only once, twice, thrice, four times, ten times, hundred, hundred times, thousand, tens of thousand times, I had to think as to whether this is the best cost, course of action and this is, is this the best time to launch this soldier into the battle with the required resources. So that is why I told you every soldier is somebody's son, somebody's husband or somebody's father. So it's a huge responsibility vested on our shoulders. So I thought, okay, soldiers are dying. In any war, soldiers will die, officers will die. But the way the soldiers were dying, at the rate the soldiers were dying, I thought, okay, their parents, right? Even one fine day, their parents should know what role they played. What was his or her son's importance during the endeavor to rescue this country from the clutches of terrorism. So I thought, okay, I must write a book about the sacrifices made by the soldiers and officers. So that thought came to me and then I thought, okay, after the war, I will write a book and, uh, you know, military officers can't just uh, write books and, you know, launch it the way they want. They, because uh, in our system, right, you have to get permission and, you know, there are a lot of formalities, a lot of red tapes, a lot of hurdles. Then I thought, okay, I will launch, I will write a book about the sacrifices, about what I saw and what we did. I saw and we did. Not I saw and I did, we did. And uh, I thought, okay, day of my retirement, I will launch my book. So, on my way home, after my retirement, I launched my book and it became the bestseller and it gave the message to the people in every corner of this society, right? And it was uh, warmly welcomed by the people of this country. And uh, that is why I called it my flagship publication because I have already published seven books and uh, the eighth, ninth are also ready now to, to be launched and tenth one is being written, 90% I have completed. So I am a author and writing is my hobby now, but this was the flagship book. It is, the endeavor was to let the people who sent their children to the war front to know what role they played. So, the, perhaps that's a kind of a, a silent uh, dedication for the unheard and for their sacrifices that you have seen. And I mean, that, that, that uh, sounds uh, kind of a uh, uh, Cust uh, custodianship, a uh, kind of responsibility, you being as the commander of that battalion that you are giving back to them as well, division uh, giving back to them as well. So, you just mentioned about some seven books that you have already written and ninth one is coming and ten is about to be completed. Now, Are they all aligned with the same concepts So, are you talking about different uh, versions of life? Actually, I uh, now, uh, war literature is something that is lagging in Sri Lanka, right? That is why I wrote Road to Nandikadal and it is Singhala book, uh, Ranamago Se Nandikadal. Wherever I go, I meet people who have gone through these two publications, especially Ranamago Se Nandikadal. And uh, after that, I thought, okay, I should write, the, write about the wounded soldiers. So, I have some stories with me narrated by wounded soldiers, the hardships, difficulties, right? So, I thought of writing a novel, a fiction about wounded soldiers, right? It is a soldier's story, Kadolatu. And, you know, uh, in the, some segments in our society, they always downgrade the 
spouses of wounded soldiers and soldiers who are killed in action. Some people tend to think that they have become, you know, uh, toys of some people, but they are very honourable. You know, some people who lost, some soldiers who lost both their limbs, right, they got married, right. So when I see a soldier without limbs, right, accompanied by his wife, normally I ask a question, I call everybody Puta. I asked the lady, Puta, when was he wounded? Then the next question, when was your wedding? So, by shooting these two questions, I can get to know whether it is after his injury or before his injury. 90% of the cases after the injury. Right? So, a lady getting married to a man who has lost both limbs or both hands or both eyes, it's a huge sacrifice. So, if somebody is pointing his or her finger at such a lady, thinking that she has become a toy in the society, that is really wrong. That is why I wanted to introduce a pillar of strength to that wounded soldier, right? With the stories I have heard, right? There is a character in that book called Hema Mali and the role played by the wives of tens of thousands of soldiers who are either restricted to their beds, bedridden or restricted to their wheelchairs throughout their lives, right? So, that is why I wrote Kadol Lattu. Then, its English translation is now ready to be launched. Then I wrote, then I met another uh, girl in a rehabilitation camp. When I was the uh, Vanni commander, immediately after the war, I was appointed as the Vanni commander, Vanni Security Forces commander. And uh, I was appointed as the, same time I was appointed as the competent authority for IDPs and also rehabilitation of ex-combatants were handled by me. So one day I went to uh, the girls camp where 2,800 uh, LTT girls were rehabilitated. When I went there, the lady officer in charge of that camp, he told me, sir, there is a girl, you should listen to that girl. I asked, what? What is the speciality? No, sir, I should not explain. You should listen to this girl. Sir, please, just listen to her. It's a different story. So, I gave a listening ears. Uh, the session went for about three hours. She was a suicide bomber who was ready to die at the word of command of her leader. The story narrated by her, you know, goosebumps. And I wrote her story as a fiction in Uttara Devi book. Then the next one, after I became the defense secretary, now that is about war literature, right? I gave a start and many people will follow. Then, uh, after I became the defense secretary, you know, I started handling the underworld and, you know, the operations against underworld. So, I saw a lot of things happening in this society with the activities of underworld people, their leaders. How an innocent man can become an underworld gangster? After becoming the underworld, uh, becoming an underworld gangster, how you rise up? to the leadership and after that how you exercise your command and authority in the underworld leadership channel and how you end your life. When you end your life, how your son takes over. Like a crown prince, your son was the crown prince in the underworld gang. When the leader Demise, the son will take over. And likewise, with true incidents, I have written that book called Pathalayu. Right? Then I wanted to write about a leader. So I, cons I, I considered a couple of leaders in this country. 
and I selected former Defence Secretary Gotabe Rajapaksha before he became the President. He was my boss. I as a I passed out in December 1982, and I joined Rajana Rifles, and he was my immediate boss, Major Gotabe Rajapaksha. So I knew him for more than 38 years. So I wrote about him. That is his biography. So the English version is also there. So there are all together seven publications are out, and I have written another fiction, a novel called uh, Tarage Agamane. It is about a Kandyan girl coming into politics. Because I see a lot of politics in this country now. So I have written about it. Then the next one is, is a different book called Rajali Sandesha. It's a Sandesha Kavya, right? It's a Kavipota, a book with poems. And it already I have written 90% of the book and it will be the biggest Kavipota in Sri Lanka. Already it is the biggest one. I think the biggest one was Vaulua, written by Mr. Rapiel Tenakon. But now, in my book, I have already completed 1,710 poems. So my target is 2,000. And it's a very interesting one. Okay, now <laughs> it gives it gives me immense pleasure to uh, get this uh, get this interview going further. And uh, before going further, I would say that you have been submerging a lot of your talents with the cover of a military suit, and the suit is over. You are all the things are coming up like a like a rubber ball kept under the under the force in a, in, a, in a water tank now. You are writing about uh, the water, war literature, then you are talking about uh, the biographies, and then you are talking about uh, the literature, the Sinhalese literature related poems and all that stuff. So, I think now the next uh, area that I am going to touch upon is general that, uh, okay, we have talked about your, uh, discuss about your childhood, your time at Ananda, then your time at uh, forces and your, uh, your, your activities and are played a role played in the armed forces and also the the steps that you have taken after retirement as well but now the in interesting question comes with all these uh, uh, time commitments and with all these harangues in your plate how did you find your time to uh, work to ananda college all boys association actually this is a very common question i am faced with right wherever i go people after talking with me uh, this is the common question before that, I should tell you, in my writing ability, there is another, another side of my writing. I am, a I am a lyricist, right? I have written more than 25 songs so far. I started maybe two, three years ago. And uh, already six songs are out. And for this Valentine's Day, another, the seventh one will be out. And uh, about seven, eight songs are being done right now. Even Bhatia Santush uh, Sebalaputu song, I consider it as my flagship song because it is really touching everybody's heart. It's about wounded soldiers, Sebalaputu. Nativu Vat Maubime Angalak Taman Ge Aiki Mata, that song. Uh, but the interesting is, the thing is, where do I find time? If you think you have no time, that means you are disorganized. If you think you are a busy man, that means you are disorganized. You should know how to do the time management. Of course, I am a busy man, right? The enormous responsibility vested on me or put on my shoulders from the government of Sri Lanka and its president, you know, no match. I am in charge of national security. The responsibility of national security is the responsibility of the defense secretary, right? So, I have to work round the clock, 24-7. But, if I concentrate only on that, my talents, whatever I have, thanks to my parents, right, it will just go away. So, I'm, I, Army has trained me as a night bird, right. Uh, when I leave office, you know, it is quite late. But after going home, you know, having a contact with my uh, 
family member, you know, after a little chat, after having dinner, I start working in my home office. I clear certain files, sent by the office, and after that, it comes the writing time. So I start around 10 o'clock or 10.30 or maybe 11 o'clock and I, I can go on till 1.30, 2 o'clock or 2.30. Until such time, I feel really sleepy, I do write. Every day I am doing that. Mm -hmm. So that is how all these publications have come up. And even in future, many more publications will come and all thanks to my night writing. So then, uh, General, tell us the, uh, how, how, how do I one recall your uh, involvement with uh, Ananda College, the Old Boys Association? When did it happen like? Uh Actually, uh, uh, during my younger days, I could not uh, attend to or I could not concentrate on the activities of Ananda College because I was always away from home always fighting with the terrorists inside jungles and uh, the time that I spent with my parents or my loving family, it was very minimal. My daughter was my only child, my daughter was brought up by my wife, right? And only thing that I could do was, you know, I came home after one and a half months, two months, just spent seven days with my family, went back. But it was my wife who brought my daughter up. So, when somebody does not have time to look after his family, I don't think he will have the time to look after his school or do something for the school. That is why I told during my younger days I could not do anything. But after that, whatever the possibility I got, whatever the time I got, right, Whatever the way I can help my alma mater, right, I started doing it. And uh, I being a military officer, senior military officer, I had the capacity to do it. And uh, after talking to the respective commanders during various times, right, various things were done to help the school. And now I am the defense secretary. So, tri services are under me. And whatever the support we can give from the uh, try services we are doing it this is not for any personal gains it is to help one of the greatest institutions ever established in this country Ananda College and for its student community and the future generations of student communities so that gives me a kind of an opening to my next question, General. Now, in the recent past that you have uh, ventured into uh, forming the, the Ananda College, uh, the professional forum, and you have been a, uh, you know, old, back, old, old Anandians professional forum, and you have been a backbone as an, as a, as a, as a uh, I think the, the, the initial, the first president of that uh, professional forum. I mean, just, uh, I mean, it, the compulsions are very clear now because the, the answer is already been given in a half way because you didn't have any time during your time at the security forces to help Anand, even though you wanted to do it. But having, uh, you know, got your time after your retirement and all that, you wanted to just uh, reciprocate back to the school where you got all the things uh, into your life. So that is probably perhaps one of the reasons that you wanted to get this. And any, any specific uh, compulsions behind the, uh, the endeavor and uh, performing this old Anandiyas professional forum and what are your, uh, you know, basic uh, the plans? Actually, Mali, uh, uh, there are more than 40 affiliated groups to old Anandiyas uh, uh, sorry, uh, Old Boys Association, right? Um, among these uh, affiliated groups, there are there is a doctor's guild, there is a lawyer's guild, there is a architect's guild, right? Engineer's guild, right? So most of these uh, affiliated groups, uh, either they are c comprised of a group of students during a specific time period. Now, I am, belongs to 75 to 80 group. So, whoever who passed out from the college during 75 to 80, they are in that group. Then there is a 80 group, 81 group, centenary group, likewise, smaller, smaller groups, right? Otherwise, as per the profession. So, 
we thought, actually the idea came from one of my seniors, Ravi Maskorala. He came and discussed with me. And I thought, okay, this is a very good idea. He told me, Kamal, I think uh, we should form an organization comprised of the professionals from all professions. So, he gave the idea and I implemented it. I discussed with many others. I gave the name as uh, Old Anandian Professional Forum and uh, we selected the correct team, good jockeys, good horses and we are running the race now. Of course, we are not competing with anybody. We always have it in our mind that that is uh, uh, we never want to overtake the Old Boys Association, OBA. We are Old Boys Association is our ancestral home, Ape Mahagedara. We are not there to overtake them. But we as an independent group that is affiliated to Old Boys Association, we will do whatever we can do for the college and also for the students and future students' population. So we have all kinds of uh, professionals from all profession, profession. We have doctors, we have engineers, we have uh, entrepreneurs, we have uh, military officers, we have police officers, we have planters, we have lawyers, so we have, we have architects, right? We have people from the construction field. So we are a mixture of everybody, right? So uh, then we undertook certain tasks. Okay, five-story building, Pasmahala. We undertook that. It was in a very bad and dilapidated condition, right. right? And during our school days, it was the iconic building in all Colombo schools. So, when I saw that building in that condition, I felt sorry for Colonel G. W. Rajapaksha, our principal, because he was very proud of this building. So we thought, okay. We will renovate this building by uh, OAPF, the Old Boys Professional Forum. Then uh, one of my seniors, Kushil Gunasekar Ayya, he told, okay, General, it is not only to renovate this building, we'll make a change. We'll make a center of excellence in this building with STEM education, which is not there in any of the schools in Sri Lanka today. So, we discussed with the Ministry of Education and the first STEM education setup will be there in Pasmala. And we are renovating the building now. There are, there are 10 classrooms as you know. Out of 10, right, there will be an IT lab, there will be an auditorium, there will be a robotic lab, there will be a maths lab, there will be a bio lab, chemistry lab, performing arts uh, auditorium. So, out of 10, Already, old Anandians or some groups of old Anandians have taken over eight out of ten. No. Right? To do it in their expenses. So, that itself is a, a very big eye opener for other fellow Anandians. Okay, we have this much of power. Only thing you have to put some extra effort to master all these power and resources into the school. So, we have started it. Then the Ananda Raga ground was in a very bad condition, right? So, we undertook the task and it is being done now. I told the principal, okay sir, by 1st of June, we will give you a ground which is not second to one of the best Raga grounds in Sri Lanka, that is Ratmala Air Force ground, okay. right? By June 1st, it will be handed over to the school. And in addition to that, we have taken over the sports like raga, boxing and golf. Golf is not, golf is a very interesting game. It is not there in any of the schools in Sri Lanka. But now more than 100 Ananda students are playing golf. And uh, boxing we are yet to start. And uh, other than that, we have another idea of forming a job bank, right? For the school leavers and also for all boys, right? We will set up a job bank with the help of old Anandias who have become entrepreneurs or the stalwarts in uh, corporate sector so that they will send their vacancies. We will manage it. If you are searching for a job in one particular field, you can register with us. 
right? The moment we get something, right, we will inform you, okay, there is an opportunity there, would you like to take it? Likewise, we are going to do Okay, so I think that sounds very interesting because the insights of your, uh, the intentions of uh, by forming the old Anandis professional forum and thereby touching on the, the five storied building to make it a center of excellence and with all the state of the art, uh, high tech, uh, high tech, so I think, uh, I mean, like, like they said, you, you just aim at the moon, then you hit uh, just, l just level down the line, but if you are leveling a mediocre level, then you are still on the ground. So, that is what they say. I so, I, I firmly believe, okay, you must always aim at the sky, right, then you will hit among stars. Sky is not the limit, you should hit beyond the sky, the stars. stars. So, I think having gone, the, having gone through the mill of life, so to say, with all these exposures, experiences and uh, having, having, uh, having experience and having uh, encountered situations and all that. Now, how satisfied you are as a, as a citizen or as a human being uh, out of your achievements thus far? Actually, uh, I am a highly satisfied man. Uh, not that I am blowing my own trumpet. The contribution from my side as an individual, as a military officer, as a citizen, right? The contribution towards my motherland, its people and also towards future generation. I am more than 100% satisfied. More than 100% satisfied. But you know, in this society, there are good people, there are bad people, there are grateful people. They are ungrateful people. Even among Anandians, old Anandians, there are lots of good people and grateful people, but there are some bad people and ungrateful people. Right? Uh, so, we are living in that society. I am being criticized by some people, including some Anandians. I have not done nothing wrong to them, but it is being done. But uh, somebody has, lot of pe people, lot of Anandians have recognized my service and they respect my service, my contribution towards the school as well as the nation. So, even though I have become a senior citizen in this country, I still have the energy, I still have the willpower, I still have the courage and enthusiasm. I know I have the talent. So, whatever I can do for my college, I will do it. Whatever I can do for my fellow Anandians and the students, I will do it. Including the grateful Anandians and ungrateful Anandians. No, it's immaterial, no difference. Anybody who is coming to me seeking a help, I'm not saying I'm a big shot, but I have some capacity, capability, right? Within my small capacity and small capability, if somebody is asking for a help, I will do it, especially for any Anandi. It's nothing but a human actually to look at that aspect because like you rightly said, we are living in a society which uh, consists of uh, people from all walks of life, all, fa all, all psychologies and all status quo and all that. So, steer clear of everything is not that easy, especially when you are trying to do something high level, right? I am sure to support you all that, there should definitely be uh, another backbone from your personal side, that is your wife and your child and your the only daughter. Just as the final uh, uh, final question that from me to you general, would you mind recollecting their, uh, their uh, sort of support, their association and uh, their, their, their connivance with your common goals? Okay, thank you very much for that question. It is a very sensitive question. Uh, but before that, I should tell you, when I was a small school boy, right, when I attended the Anand Nalanda big match, I saw the massive banner in front of one big tent, old Anandian sports club and continuously, consecutively it was there. I don't know where it is now, right? Last couple of uh, matches, I did see it, if I am not wrong. 
then uh, we formed this old anandiya professional forum and we were working like horses right all my teams are you know uh, having discussions every day somewhere some group right and that is how old anandiya professional forum has come up to this level within a period of one year then uh, when it come to old anandiya sports club the glory that they had i don't think it is there now so uh, uh, a request came from seniors counterparts as well as from the juniors for me to take over this as the president i outrightly i rejected i told i have enough of work to do and i have to run the oapf also so let some other anandian do it then finally principal spoke to me he told me uh, the the situation is not very good so can you please take over this with your team and help me out then i studied the situation and i thought okay it is my duty and responsibility to accept after principal's request otherwise a lot of iyas and mallis requested i said no so they must have requested me to take over by having confidence on me for this so i took over i was appointed i took over and uh, we are yet to start the journey i took over day before yesterday uh, anand the college sports club old anand the sports club is a sleeping giant it will be very difficult to uh, you know pump air and get the giant into action but nothing is impossible if you have the will there is a way so i know i selected few individuals for as office bearers in addition to what they already had and now we have set up a very good team and uh, we will go ahead and i am sure within a period of one year i along with my team should be able to regain the lost glory of this mamath organization the support given by my family during my endeavor you know uh, if not for that support i wouldn't have been in this position or whatever the success i achieved wouldn't have been there my parents passed away when i was a major and after that it was my wife who looked after me like my father my mother my sister and also my, like as my wife so she was my mother my sister and my friend and my wife so she really looked after me she never troubled me saying okay we are scared now it is enough now get a trance and come back to kalambo no but she did lot of ritual things she is a devoted buddhist going to temples and uh, you know offering pujas and bodhi pujas and everything set kavi and that invoked blessings on me and my boys and the most sensitive part was you know i could not attend to my daughter it was my wife she looked after my daughter she gave her education she brought her up and she is doing well in a, a foreign country but thanks to my wife she is there today and thanks to my wife i managed to concentrate on my official work so i always have a very big salute for my wife as well as my only daughter oh my god yes i think that that i i smelt the way that you have you have been talking about your achievements and your uh your 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 way of uh, life and your way of doing things i would as i really smelt that uh, you would have been backed by a very loving charming and an understanding wife so with that i think uh, uh, we are just uh, to conclude uh, the interview with uh, general uh, kamal gunaratna secretary of defense and another illustrious anandian and i take it as a pleasure and honor 
to have had this opportunity to cross check all these things and to get the real things probably would not have uh, gone to this level in uh, anywhere before as well generally if I am if I am not mistaken to these levels in this spheres because one would ask the military one would ask the secretary defense what are your roles and all that but here we have we have covered a plethora of uh, areas with lots of insights into that one. So, thank you very much uh, general for giving this opportunity for all of us to be here and uh, we will meet again one day again. Thank you, thank you very much for coming here and uh, talking to me and interviewing me. So, I thank you most profusely and also your team. Thank you very much, very big thank you for all of you.